So in, this, in case you weren't uh, at my last class, I injured my knee a few days ago, so if I move a little awkward, you know why. Uh, but I think this is going to be tough game stuff, so it should be, should be okay. Um, Charles, can I use you? Yeah. We'll just jump right into it. So if you just lay down. So we'll start from, uh, from here. So we're going to play side control today, but uh, I'll show you one kind of fun submission uh, that I like to get from kind of the passing. So I, I start setting up the submission before I even pass. So what I like to do is I step through here, and then I grab usually the belt. And then I, when I feel comfortable, I kind of place my knee down on the mat or just kind of a little bit above the mat. And then my toes on the other side. And from here, I start working the cross, like the, the lapel that's on the opposite side. So I pull this down and I start working a nice good grip. And as long as I either have both arms in or both arms on the outside, I'm safe from triangles and arm bars and stuff. Uh, but if I have the knee, if I pin this, so he, he can't really use this leg, then I'm safe to have one arm in. Okay, that's the only time I'm really safe. If I let this go, then this is really bad, right? So always make sure you, you step in and kind of pin this. So my knee pins it on one side, my, my toes on the other side. Then you're safe to play around here, either way you want. So just step in, far step, and then we go over here. Slide this through to your shoulder, and then we can start playing with this. So get a nice good grip, deep, then we're going to go underneath here as well. And we're going to keep moving, and then we're going to grab, oh, already. <laughs> so usually uh, I grab the belt, and then I follow up with my knee to stack him like this. And as I have... I'll get a little bit looser grip, so I can finish a little bit further. So I keep moving, I go here, and sometimes I can finish this by just having first my arm kind of relaxed, and then I close my fist, and then I move my elbow towards the mat. So kind of this angle right across the neck, or the uh, throat, just like this. And as I have this as well, this makes it really unpleasant. If you don't finish him there, you keep moving and you grab the elbow instead. Just like so. And then I keep just going slow. So as I have the grip here first, it's kind of my wrist is bent and then when I move over here, I get my wrist, I close my fist and the wrist goes straight. So from the beginning again, step through, find that nice grip of the nice under, feed this, now we go underneath here, keep moving, get his butt in the air, and try finish here maybe, that's okay, or we can keep moving and grab the elbow. So this prevents him from moving away from me, and this prevents him from moving into me. See? So we're kind of closing this. And all your weight is going to go on this. So yeah, you just, you're going to feel it in a minute. So We can go really slow as well. It doesn't have to be like a quick, quick thing. Questions? Let's try it out. We're not going to do the clap again. Just go. <laughs> Okay, just a few details um, on this. How you get here is not super important, I would say, right now. I want you to get just a, a nice deep grip. Because when we go through, if, if my grip is too loose, then my elbow is going to go all the way to the mat without having enough pressure. Whereas if I'm here, if I go to the mat now, for sure I'm going to get the tap. So uh, that's one thing I want you to be a little bit more uh, focused on. You go here, and I would keep moving this direction because that way you get more pressure on the on the throat and not so much on the hip. Because if you stay up here, maybe you can finish it, but a lot of the pressure goes on top of him and not the 
the throat. So I would keep, still keep moving, and you want to pass anyways if he doesn't tap. Um, but say you don't get the tap, we still get the pass. The, he, he's he's going to be stacked, he's going to be focused on protecting this, um, and you're going to get the pass anyways. So say this doesn't work, we keep moving to the next thing. So maybe I'll go this way. And so this is one of my favorites. Usually I pull the lapel away from me and in the direction where he can't see it. And so if I pull this out here, he's going to know something's coming. He's going to see this. So I pull this straight towards his legs and I keep the pressure on him. Again, I want to keep this hidden. It's going to be a sneaky one. Feed it over. And I keep this loose, nice and loose now. I'm just at the far end of my, my own lapel. And then maybe I adjust it a li little bit more because I want to keep it kind of loose in the beginning until I get this all the way to the back of his neck. This is when we can start tightening this. And this works the, the best if he doesn't know what's coming. So usually you can't really feel this like any danger right now, yeah? And then I move towards the hip, goes over. And this one gets so tight, especially if you take, take your time with this, it gets so tight that, yeah, you see? <laughs> um, so when you get the tap, instead of, just so we don't have our training partners fall asleep, instead of moving up to release this, just let go. That's way quicker, okay? Because I've had some people fall asleep with this. <laughs> so either we can start from here, or if you want to start from the whole other sequence, it's up to you. Pull your own lapel out, the far one, straight front of his legs. Move this around his, his neck or his head. Close to his body so he doesn't see it. And then we can move up a little bit if it's too tight. It depends on your uh, gi size a little bit or how, how small it is right behind his neck. This is important because if you're here, you can maybe finish it, but when I start going, this is gonna bend his neck. But if I'm here, it goes more on the throat. So it's more of a choke. So if you're on the bottom and you feel like he's bending your neck like this, you're doing it wrong. So tell him. Here, pull this out. Work this underneath, close. So the kind of end position we're going to end up in is just straight towards the mat, almost like you're skydiving, like this. That's going to be kind of the end position because you can't really go further than this. And the tension is going to go from your armpit. So the further away your armpit, the, the far armpit, is away from him and his neck, the tighter it's going to be. So that's the angle that you want to move towards. Questions? Let's try it out. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, troubleshoot a little bit. I got some, some good questions on kind of what he does for, for defense and so on. Um, I would say the most common one is where he gets his arm here. And yeah, uh, and if I have my lapel over, I'm not going to get it. But if he, he does this, he, he knows the choke is coming, and then you are not sneaky enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a few things to make it even more subtle is kind of how you approach this. And the slower, the better, I would say. Because if you're pulling out your lapel and then moving it like this, he's, he knows something co something's coming. But if I'm here, and I pull this out slowly, just in front of me, just super discreet. It's way better. Just like so. So go slow, because if, if he can hear it too. So he usually he, he knows something's coming. And you can also, if if you want, you can do this if you're feeling a little bit nasty, under 
Also works. Not to pray that. Jiggy is not too disgusting. But as long as you go low and yeah, and slow, usually it's, it's okay. And if he does, yeah, defend, so go, go on your neck, yeah. I'm not going to go over the top and try and finish this anyways. I'm either going to go on the inside and try to feed this out before I go. Um, or I start attacking something else. I kind of, yeah, I go for something else. There's a lot of other variations that we can go, go for. But if he does this, don't go over the top. Go in between and still get this. Feed this over so it's nice and loose. And then from here again, just slow and control. So make sure now I'm tightening everything. And from here, he's not gonna, there's, there's real no good def defense when, when it's this tight towards the neck. If you find the right angle, you're gonna get the tap. Yeah. And he can move all he, all he wants. I'm just gonna keep going towards my scout guy and just laying on the mat and you're gonna get it. Were there any other kind of issues you encountered or questions? No. Okay, let's try it just two, three more times and then we'll bring you back in. So, any questions on, on this now? I feel like everyone's uh, got the the angles and the right steps and so on. One thing I want to talk about is just chokes in general, how to finish them. Because this applies to, to most chokes at least. Um, it's a better example from, from the back. So if I go for like a rear naked set, I'm here and I go for this. And I go from, from zero to a hundred. Say this is a hundred for me. And I don't finish it. Then he's gonna know that's a hundred percent. And if he got through the first attempt, he's more likely to get through the second, right? So, and then I go like maybe 90% because then my arms are spent. 80%, I'm not gonna finish him. It's gonna go lower and lower for me. But if I'm here and I go from zero to maybe five, to 10, 15, 20, see, it's so much easier and he, and he doesn't know really where I'm at, he's just feeling the pressure increasing slowly. Does that make sense? So it's the same thing here. I see a lot of people with the, the choke that we just did. Going from zero to 100. It's like, Stevie, it's not working. Yes, well, go easy, Take, slow down. 15, 20, 20. <laughs> see? And I can, so as long as I have like, I don't know, 50%, I can stay here for 10, 15, 20 minutes and hang out. Cause he's, he's locked down, he's not going anywhere. So I can hang, hang out and he can probably resist for 30 seconds maybe. But then we're, we're in one minute, two minutes. Yeah, he's gonna be asleep. Yeah. So every, every choke you do that, at least the, the blood chokes, that's on the side and not the throat. Do it slowly, it's way better. Makes it e way easier. Same with the cross color choke, all that stuff. Yeah? So let's uh, keep moving because you, you got that one already. So let's start from uh, just here and he's starting to turn away from you. Yes, here. This is very common. What I would do now is I place my knee right behind his shoulder blades and I keep everything tight here. I start moving up with my other knee, up, up, hand on his face, and I pinch his elbow now, just the elbow. I'm not going for the arm, I wanna aim for the, the elbow. And now when I feel like I have everything super tight, I fall down as close to him as possible. And now I lift my hip, pull his face away a little bit, and so this looks like an arm bar, but it's more like a shoulder, shoulder crush. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of ripping his arm out of the socket. That's the, the feeling I'm, I'm going for. 
Super nasty. Super good. So we're here. We have, so he has like an underhook, but he's turning away from me. I follow up. I keep going. So I'm pinching my knees on his upper body. And when he realizes that I'm up to something, I'm up to no good, he usually starts turning into me again. That's when the face comes in. So just hand on the ear, just on the jawline a little bit. And you can be as, as mean or as nice as you want with this, but just a little something to, to make him not turn into you. I go down here, and here he's really gonna try, try to turn in. And you can just match that pressure and face him away from you. And find this angle, so I'm here. And I'm lifting my hip towards the ceiling. Yeah. So this might be a difficult angle to find for, for some of you. But just make sure you have everything really tight and then as you fall there's a big difference in falling over here and trying to lift or falling here so I'm, I'm as close to him if he's here i want to kind of almost roll underneath him that's the feeling i'm going for one more time i'm here i'm turning away i move up And again, I'm not gripping any fabric. The only thing I'm using this hand for is, is his face. But this one is not doing anything. It's just the elbow that pin really pinches above his elbow. So not beneath. I need to be above on this one. Uh, yeah, it works no for sure. Yeah. If you're both like super sweaty, it's for sure you're gonna have to be even tighter, but it still works. Yeah, definitely. Good question. Any other questions? No, it's, there's no pressure on the elbow, right? No, no, it's 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 all it's a weird. Yes. Like. Ooh. Yeah, it's just painful, and it's just like might give me back my arm. You know, that's the feeling. Yes. More up, up towards the ceiling, I would say. So yeah, my hip towards the ceiling and then also I'm, I'm so my feet I, I push them away a little bit to kind of because the feeling I want is again pulling his arm out from his body like this so my knees can, and and my feet can kind of push away a little bit and my arm or my upper body is stretching his arm at the same time as I'm lifting that's the, the feeling just like so yeah but uh yeah try it out on each other and you're gonna feel where you need to go. Let's do it. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, I know it's like last day of camp, you're hungry, you're tired, so I appreciate you uh, coming to the class anyways. Very good, thank you. <laughs>